Before he was Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Texas Rattlesnake was Stephen James Williams. When he was seven or eight years old, Austin accidentally discovered wrestling while changing channels on his TV. Instantly, the Rattlesnake was hooked and knew what he wanted to do. Stone Cold continued to watch wrestling as he grew older and finally got a chance to step into the ring when he found a school in Dallas, Texas, run by a man named Gentleman Chris Adams. The Rattlesnake struggled when he began training, but he didn't quit. Soon, he began competing in the ring using his real name, Steve Williams. However, there was another wrestler with the same name, Dr. Death Steve Williams. Stone Cold had to change his name, so he ended up going with Steve Austin, which is what he'd be called for for the rest of his career. Soon, Austin got the opportunity to wrestle in WCW, where he called himself Stunning Steve Austin. He had a solid run, winning several championships and forming a tag team called the Hollywood Blondes with Brian Pillman. However, in 1995, Austin would be fired, infamously finding out when he got a letter via FedEx. With his WCW career behind him, Stone Cold would head to ECW. While in the land of extreme, Steve Austin began to develop the rebellious, loudmouth character he would use in WWE. Speaking of WWE, that's where Austin would head to next. In January 1996, Ted DiBiase said he found someone that could wear the Million Dollar Championship. That person ended up being Stone Cold Steve Austin, or as he was called at the time, the Ringmaster. After the glowing introduction, Austin would compete in his first WWE match the next week. With the Million Dollar Championship around his waist and Ted DiBiase accompanying him, Steve Austin was prepared to take on his debut opponent, a young Matt Hardy. Once they locked up, Stone Cold took down Hardy with ease. The Rattlesnake's first offensive move was the Luthez Press and Punches, which would become a signature move of Stone Cold's. Austin then hit Hardy with a back body drop, followed by several chops and punches in the corner. The Rattlesnake's assault continued with a move that kind of resembled Austin's iconic pointed elbow. Matt Hardy tried him out of combat back, but Steve Austin responded with a Gorid Buster. Stone Cold went for the pin, but changed his mind and wanted the match to continue. That was a mistake, as Hardy dodged a running knee and started hitting the rattlesnake with fists. Austin, though, ended his opponent's rampage by throwing him into the ropes and then locking in the Million Dollar Dream sleeper hold. Matt Hardy quickly passed out, and Steve, the ringmaster Austin, was awarded the victory. Technically, the match was just a squash, but it seemed to have a bit more to it, which was appreciated. The craziest part though is that Matt Hardy was Steve Austin's debut opponent in WWE. While Austin debuted as the ringmaster, that name didn't last long. In real life, Steve Austin didn't like his character and decided to shave off his hair and grow a goatee. He also developed a new persona based on a serial killer named Richard Kuklinski, whose nickname was the Iceman. Along with these changes, Austin would also change his ring name to Stone Cold Steve Austin, only about two months after his first WWE match. The ringmaster name would still be referenced, but it soon faded away. Anyways, Stone Cold's first feud was with Savio Vega. They fought on Raw, with the match ending in a double countout. They had a rematch at WrestleMania 12, which Stone Cold won. However, Austin would lose their third match at the following pay-per-view. The Rattlesnake and Vega had a fourth fight, with the added stipulation that if Steve Austin lost, then Ted DiBiase would be forced to quit WWE. Stone Cold did lose, which ended his alliance with DiBiase. While this seemed like a setback, Austin's career was about to be taken to the next level. Steve Austin won the 1996 King of the Ring tournament by defeating Jake the Snake Roberts in the final round. Roberts was playing a born-again Christian character at the time, so Austin ad-libbed this famous line, iconic 316 catchphrase, and helped push him as one of WWE's biggest stars. The Texas Rattlesnake was still a heel or bad guy at this point, and this was reflected over the next few months. Stone Cold would taunt Bret Hart, who was out of action. Once Bret returned, he accepted Steve Austin's challenge, setting up a match between them at Survivor Series. In the lead-up, Brian Pillman was interviewing Steve Austin and inadvertently complimented the hitman, causing Stone Cold to attack Pillman and break his ankle. Later, Pillman was doing an interview from his home while recovering from the injury. Stone Cold would break in, leading to Brian Pillman pointing a gun at Steve Austin. This was a very controversial segment and became known as Pillman's Got a Gun. While there was some backlash because of it, the segment didn't hurt Stone Cold's career. If anything, it did the opposite. At the 1996 Survivor Series, Stone Cold finally got his match against Bret Hart. The winner of the match also got a WWE Championship match, so the stakes were extremely high. Despite all the trash talking Austin had done, he could not pin the hitman, and Bret Hart was the one who had his hand raised. The Rattlesnake lost the battle, but his rivalry with Hart was far from over. At the 1997 Royal Rumble, both Steve Austin and Bret Hart entered the 30-man match. Hart did eliminate Stone Cold, but due to the referee's 
not seeing it, Steve Austin got back in the ring and ended up eliminating Bret Hart and winning the match. Due to the controversial nature of Austin's victory and the fact that the WWE Championship had been vacated after the Royal Rumble, Austin instead got to participate in a four-way match for the WWE title at the next pay-per-view in your house 13. Bret Hart was in that match as well and the Hitman ended up winning. Austin wasn't going to let that happen so he decided to cost Bret Hart the championship the next night while Bret was defending it. The two finally got to go one on one again at WrestleMania 13. This is where an important part of Stone Cold's career happened. After throwing everything at each other, this caused Bret Hart to turn heel and for Steve Austin to become a face at the exact same moment. Now with the roles reversed, Stone Cold would fight Bret Hart in another match at the next pay-per-view in your house 14. Due to the British Bulldog hitting Stone Cold with a chair, Steve Austin won the match and earned a shot at the Undertaker's WWE Championship. Before facing the Deadman, however, Austin faced Bret Hart for a fourth time on Raw. The match was ruled a no contest, but Stone Cold still ended the fight by injuring Bret Hart's leg. With the Hitman out of the way, Stone Cold focused on his WWE Championship match against The Undertaker. Unfortunately, an old rival had come back to cost Austin his shot at becoming WWE Champion. Brian Pillman distracted Stone Cold during the title match, allowing Undertaker to beat the Texas Rattlesnake. Pillman had aligned himself with Bret Hart and the Hart Foundation months earlier, so Austin conveniently had all of his enemies in one group. Shawn Michaels also had beef with the Hearts, so he and Stone Cold decided to team up. They even defeated Owen Hart and the British Bulldog to win the WWE Tag Team Championship, the first title that Stone Cold won in WWE. Since their partnership wasn't built on a solid foundation, Michaels and Steve Austin got into a fair bit of arguments. They even fought each other while they were tag team champions, with the match ending in a double disqualification when they attacked the referee. HBK would need time off due to an injury, forcing Austin to relinquish the tag team title. However, he was put in a match against Owen Hart and the British Bulldog to crown new champions. Austin was given the opportunity to choose a new tag team partner, but he elected to fight Hart and Bulldog on his own. Despite not wanting a partner, a debuting Dude Love would come to the ring and help Stone Cold. Austin accepted Dude Love's assistance, and the two won the match, making Stone Cold a two-time tag team champion. Stone Cold's feud at the Hart Foundation, and especially Owen Hart, continued to get hotter and hotter. Finally, at the 1997 SummerSlam, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Owen Hart went one-on-one -on -one for Hart's Intercontinental Championship. During the match, Owen would infamously botch a pile driver, causing Stone Cold's neck to break. Stone Cold did manage to roll up Hart and win the match, but that didn't matter. Due to the injury, Steve Austin would relinquish both the IC and Tag Team Championships. However, Austin wouldn't be out of the ring for too long. In September 1997, while Owen Hart was in the ring, Stone Cold attacked him from behind. This prompted Vince McMahon to get into the ring and have a word with Austin. The Rattlesnake responded by giving his boss a Stone Cold Stunner, which kicked off a rivalry between Steve Austin and Vince McMahon. Austin, though, still had some unfinished business with Owen Hart. At Survivor Series, Mr. 316 got his rematch with Hart, who was once again the Intercontinental Champion. Stone Cold defeated Owen and won the IC Championship. This also put an end to Stone Cold's rivalry with the Hearts. Soon after, Austin would be attacked by the Nation of Domination, allowing The Rock to steal the Intercontinental Belt. For weeks, the Brahma Bull would declare himself the best Intercontinental Champion ever. At D-Generation X In Your House, Stone Cold and The Rock have their first one-on-one -on -one match. The Rattlesnake won, and he took back possession of the Intercontinental Belt. The next night, Vince McMahon ordered Austin to defend his championship against The Rock again. Due to his rebellious nature, Stone Cold decided to forfeit the IC title and threw the belt into a river. It may have seemed like a bad decision, but it definitely wasn't. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Stone Cold won the match for a second time. This put Steve Austin in the main event of WrestleMania 14. He went up against the WWE Champion, Shawn Michaels, and to make it even bigger, boxer Mike Tyson was made the special guest enforcer. While Tyson had aligned himself with Michaels Group, DX, the baddest man on the planet turned on HBK during the WrestleMania match. This helped Stone Cold win and become WWE Champion. This was officially the point when Stone Cold Steve Austin became WWE's top star. Despite being arguably the biggest moment of Stone Cold's career, he didn't crack open a single beer. Maybe WWE was short on cold ones, but they wouldn't have been if they were on FUBAR. FUBAR is a great place to hang out with friends and meet new people. You can rate users' profiles, play a ton of games, climb the leaderboards, and much more. Everything you do on FUBAR earns you points, allowing you to level up and unlock more features. 
Something else that's cool about FUBAR is the virtual currency, FUBUCKS. You can use them to buy drinks for friends, play games, and help other members on the site. FUBAR is an awesome hub for wrestling fans like you and me. It already has a great wrestling community and it'll be even bigger and better once you join. Use the link in the description to create your free FUBAR account and be sure to add me once you do. Thank you to FUBAR for sponsoring this video. Everyone was happy to see Stone Cold with the WWE title, except for Vince McMahon. McMahon first tried to change Steve Austin into a corporate champion, but the rattlesnake had none of it. Since that didn't work, McMahon made it his mission to not only take the WWE Championship away from Steve Austin, but also make Austin's life as miserable as possible. Vince would do things like make himself the special guest referee during Austin's championship matches or having his stooges interfere, but that didn't work. However, at the 1998 King of the Ring, it seemed like Vince McMahon had won. Austin defended the WWE title against Kane in a first blood match. The Undertaker interfered and accidentally hit Stone Cold with a chair, causing the rattlesnake to bleed and for Stone Cold to lose the WWE title. This was only a small bump in Stone Cold's title reign. He beat Kane in a rematch the very next night and regained the WWE Championship. McMahon was furious, so his next big plan was to have Stone Cold face Kane and The Undertaker in a triple threat match. The Brothers of Destruction ended up pinning Stone Cold at the same time, which led to Vince McMahon declaring the WWE title vacant. To crown a new champion, McMahon set up a match between Undertaker and Kane for the title, with Steve Austin as the guest referee. Stone Cold was of course not interested in raising Undertaker or Kane's hand, but Vince warned Austin that if he didn't perform his proper duties, then he would fire Stone Cold. During the match, not only did Austin get physically involved, but he also ended up declaring himself the winner. Of course, Stone Cold wasn't actually the WWE Champion, but he did get fired by Vince McMahon. However, Steve Austin's firing only lasted a day as the next night Shane McMahon would re-sign Stone Cold. The Texas Rattlesnake also got revenge on Vince by dragging him into the ring and pointing a gun to his head, which turned out to be a toy. With that out of the way, Austin still wanted to regain the WWE Championship. A tournament was held at the 1998 Survivor Series to crown a new champion. Steve Austin entered but lost in the semi-final round when Shane McMahon betrayed him. Despite losing the tournament, Stone Cold would receive a WWE Championship match the next night against the man who won the the tournament, The Rock. Unfortunately for Austin, The Undertaker decided this was a good opportunity to get even with Stone Cold. Austin and Taker would fight in a Buried Alive match, which the Rattlesnake won thanks to interference from Kane. The victory also meant that Stone Cold qualified for the 1999 Royal Rumble. Unfortunately, Austin got entry number one. Strangely enough, Vince McMahon was the second entry. This led to a crazy Rumble match, but in the closing moments, it came down to just Vince and Austin in the ring. The WWE Champion, The Rock, who delighted himself with McMahon, came to the ring and distracted Stone Cold, allowing Vince McMahon to eliminate him and win the Royal Rumble. Since he didn't want to fight The Rock, McMahon decided to forfeit his WrestleMania Championship match. Apparently, Vince didn't know that if you forfeit your Royal Rumble victory, the runner-up gets the championship match. In this case, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin used this to get a match with McMahon. At the St. Valentine's Day Massacre pay-per-view, Vince McMahon and Stone Cold would face off in a steel cage match, with the winner receiving the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania. The Big Show made his WWE debut during the match by emerging from under the ring. However, the plan backfired when Big Show threw Stone Cold through the steel cage and caused Austin to win. With his WrestleMania match locked in, Austin raised hell in the following weeks before finally facing off against The Rock. Just like the year before, Stone Cold got the job done and reclaimed the WWE Championship. In the aftermath of WrestleMania 15, we actually saw Stone Cold and Vince McMahon working together. McMahon's daughter, Stephanie, was kidnapped by The Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness. Steve Austin would come and rescue her, which moved Vince McMahon to help Austin. At the Over the Edge pay-per-view, Stone Cold defended the WWE title against The Undertaker. Vince McMahon was the special guest referee, and so was Shane McMahon, who was working with Undertaker. A chaotic match followed, and despite Vince's help, Austin lost the match and the WWE title. Things got even worse when it was revealed that Vince McMahon was secretly working with Taker and his alliance with Stone Cold was all a facade. Vince's wife, Linda, as well as Stephanie were rightfully disgusted by what Vince had done 
So they ended up giving Steve Austin their 50% ownership of WWE, making Stone Cold CEO. The Rouse League would face Vince and Shane McMahon in a two-on-one handicap ladder match with 100% ownership of WWE on the line. Due to the briefcase mysteriously moving out of Austin's reach, the McMahons won and took back control. However, before the match, Stone Cold had scheduled a WWE Championship match between himself and The Undertaker. Steve Austin won the match, making him a four-time WWE Champion. The era of Austin continued until SummerSlam, where he lost a triple threat match against Mankind and Triple H. The Texas Rail State got his rematch at No Mercy, but due to The Rock accidentally attacking Austin, the game was able to retain the title. All three men were going to face off at the 1999 Survivor Series, but before the match, Stone Cold was hit by a car. This not only made him unable to compete that night, but Austin would also be out of action for almost 10 months. The reason for this was to give Stone Cold time to undergo neck surgery for the injury he suffered two years earlier at SummerSlam 1997. It wouldn't be until September 2000 that Austin would be back full time. Upon his return, Commissioner McFoley began an investigation to find out who ran Austin down. Infamously, it turned out it was Rikishi, and he did it for The Rock. In his first match back, Stone Cold fought Rikishi in a no-holds-barred match. The match was ruled a no contest when Austin tried to run Rikishi down with a truck, but Stone Cold had gotten his revenge. Later, Steve Austin fought Rikishi and Kurt Angle in a handicap match on Raw. Triple H came down to help Austin, but ended up attacking the Texas Rattlesnake. As it turned out, the game was behind the car attack and had hired Rikishi to take out Austin. Of course, the two had a match, which fittingly was at the 2000 Survivor Series. What was also fitting was that Austin lifted Triple H with a forklift and sent him falling down. With that over, Stone Cold turned his attention to the 2001 Royal Rumble. The Rattlesnake won the entire thing, giving him a shot at the WWE Championship. His opponent was The Rock, and in Austin's home state of Texas, the Rattlesnake and the Brahma Bull went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the second time on the grandest stage of them all. The match was not without controversy. Vince McMahon showed up and helped Austin, even giving him a chair to hit The Rock. Stone Cold won the match and the title, and also turned him heel by joining forces with Vince McMahon. Triple H would also side with Stone Cold, helping him defeat Rock in a rematch. Austin and Triple H would call themselves the two-man power trip and soon became WWE Tag Team Champions. However, their partnership came to an abrupt end when Triple H tore his quadricep during a tag team title defense. Austin still remained WWE be champion, but started to become whinier and demanded people respect him. At the same time, Shane and Stephanie McMahon had formed the Alliance, a group consisting of WCW and ECW wrestlers. Their mission was to take over WWE. This prompted Vince McMahon to ask Stone Cold to captain Team WWE and fight back against the Alliance. Austin initially refused, but soon came around and was back to his rebellious self. At the Invasion pay-per-view, Team WWE and the Alliance went one-on-one. -on -one. To everyone's shock, Austin turned on his teammates and sided with the Alliance. A few months later, the two sides had one more battle at Survivor Series in a winner-take-all match. Austin captained the Alliance, but due to Kurt Angle turning on them, Team WWE was victorious and the Alliance was no more. Austin was still WWE Champion in the aftermath, but that would be put to the test. At the final pay-per-view of 2001, Vengeance, a tournament was held to unify the WWE and WCW World Championships. Austin defeated Kurt Angle, but lost the unification match to Chris Jericho. Since it worked well last time, Austin entered the 2002 Royal Rumble. He made it to the Final Four, but was eliminated. However, he would earn a championship match against Chris Jericho at No Way Out. At the same time, the NWO, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall were prepared to make their return to WWE. They met Austin backstage, but when Stone Cold refused a beer gift from them, they went the extreme route and cost Austin his match against Jericho. This set up a feud between Stone Cold and the NWO, which saw Steve Austin defeat Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18. The next few months were rather lackluster for the Rattlesnake. He lost a WWE Championship number one contenders match at Backlash to The Undertaker. He would then have a short feud with Big Show and Ric Flair. In real life, Stone Cold became frustrated with the creative direction of WWE and things came to a breaking point in June 2002 when Austin was supposed to lose to Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifying match. Austin no-showed the event and ended up going home and wasn't seen for the rest of the year. Things eventually got patched up behind the scenes, and in early 2003, rumblings of a Stone Cold return 
began. The Raw general manager, Eric Bischoff, had been trying to sign Austin to the Raw brand. Bischoff was unsuccessful and was forced to tell Vince McMahon that he had failed. Jim Ross, however, was able to convince Steve Austin to come back, and this caused McMahon to put Eric Bischoff in a match with Stone Cold. Steve Austin officially made his return at the 2003 No Way Out pay-per-view, and of course, defeated Bischoff. After that, The Rock, who had recently returned as well, was upset that Austin had been voted Superstar of the Decade. The Great One also mentioned that he had never defeated the Rattlesnake at WrestleMania. This set up a challenge that Stone Cold accepted. At WrestleMania 19, Stone Cold and The Rock locked up for the third time on the grandest stage for them all. The two had a legendary match, but this time, The Rock was the winner. Unbeknownst to just about everyone at the time, but this was basically the end of Stone Cold Steve Austin's career. He would be back later that same year as the co-general manager of Raw, but he never wrestled. As the years went on, Austin would still be part of WWE, but it became less and less likely that fans would ever see him in a match again. Then, something interesting happened almost 20 years after Stone Cold's last match. In March 2022, Kevin Owens invited Steve Austin to be a guest on the KO show at WrestleMania 38. Austin did accept, but that didn't stop Owens from insulting Stone Cold's home of Texas. Finally, on WrestleMania 38 Saturday, Owens and Steve Austin met in the ring. KO revealed that the real reason he invited the Texas Rattlesnake was to challenge him to a no-holds-barred match. Austin thought about it and decided to ask the crowd. After hearing a definite answer, Stone Cold decided it was time for one more match. The fight began with both men throwing fists, with Austin eventually getting the advantage. After some stomps in the corner, Stone Cold threw Kevin Owens into the opposite side of the ring. The WWE legend then sent KO to the outside. Owens tried to change the tide, but Stone Cold caught him with a clothesline. Kevin Owens finally got a break when he threw Austin's head into the ring post. The Canadian started throwing his own fists into the Texan's face and set up a table. Stone Cold got back into it by countering and sending Kevin Owens crashing into the foreign object. The wrestlers then went over the barricade and began brawling amongst the fans. Steve Austin tried to suplex Kevin Owens, but KO countered and sent Austin falling to the concrete floor. As the two went over the barricade, Stone Cold chucked a prone Kevin Owens onto the commentary table. With KO laid out, Austin dished out another series of fists while also chugging plenty of beer. Out of desperation, Kevin Owens stunned Steve Austin and tried to get a ride on Austin's ATV. Stone Cold thought that was a good idea and drove KO to the top of the stage. The Texas Rattlesnake hit his opponent with not one, but two suplexes onto the hard surface. Austin then sent a wounded Kevin Owens rolling back into the ring while also grabbing another round of beers. Stone Cold got a bit too relaxed though as Owens struck with a stunner from out of nowhere. The Canadian then brought a chair into the ring. Right as Kevin Owens swung, Austin ducked, causing the chair to hit Owens. What's funny is that Stone Cold had this exact same thing happen to himself years earlier. With Kevin Days, Stone Cold hit the stunner and got the pinfall. Poor Kevin Owens couldn't catch a break. After the match, Stone Cold Steve Austin gave him one more stunner and then the man was arrested. I sort of have mixed feelings about this match. Having Stone Cold wrestle a match after nearly two decades was huge and the match with Kevin Owens didn't seem to fit the hype. We didn't actually know if Austin was going to wrestle a match until about a minute before it happened. Part of me feels like the in-ring return of Stone Cold Steve Austin should have been hyped up a ton rather than presenting it as an interview and then surprising everyone with a match. On the other hand though, it was kind of fun with how casual it was. Having Steve Austin just kind of decide to have a match right there on the spot gave it this fun laid back attitude and considering what the match was like, I think that worked out the best. Austin and Owens brawl wasn't a 5 star wrestling match, it was just a fun fight. Had WWE announced that Kevin Owens and Stone Cold were going to have a match, and this is what happened, it would have felt a bit weird. But with Austin just deciding on the spot to have a match, the no holds barred brawl fit pretty well. Stone Cold also appeared the next night, confronting his old rival, Vince McMahon. Even though McMahon took the stunner incredibly poorly, it was still a fun moment. As of right now, this is where Stone Cold's career ends. However, now that he's finally wrestled again, this opens the doors for Steve Austin to have more matches. That would be great, but I also don't want this video to be outdated, so I'm fine if Stone Cold doesn't wrestle again. After a video like this though, I need a drink. Hit the link on screen to check out FUBAR and have real fun with real people.